because although we're an alternative uh, uh, site and we publish it on a website in South Africa, actually, we have that even though we, we don't have the, anywhere near the impact of the mainstream media, the, the, the reaction of the state has been quite extreme. So, for example, last year in October, we, we found out we were blacklisted by the Ministry of Defense. Um, we were told by, or, or my colleague Phil Miller was told by a MOD press officer, uh, when you ask for some information, we no longer deal with your publication. Um, and actually, this sparked, <laughs> we, this sparked a level two press freedom alert being sent out by the Council of Europe, um, which means the MOD had to respond. And Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, had to make a statement in the House of Commons about it. And he ordered an independent inquiry and review of what had happened. And this uh, was published a couple of months later, and it basically showed that some senior officer within the press office said it had called us a hostile organization and said to put us on a list, which sounds like something out of uh, Pinochet's Chile or something, you know, like independent journalists being put on a list by a military officer. Um, again, this was published, uh, the, the, the inquiry, the review was written by Tony Blair's ex-defense spokesman, uh, ex-spokesman, not defense spokesman, ex-spokesman. Um, and it was published on the government website. Not one newspaper has ever written a word about it. It's been completely buried, which even su surprised me because I thought if it comes on the government website, it's been written by this establishment person, they, they might cover it. But again, completely ignored. After that, um, I found out that GCHQ, the largest intelligence agency in the UK, had blacklisted me. Had blacklisted me. I got internal emails from GCHQ, which showed that they stopped engaging with me when, they, when I published the first in a series of stories about their schools program. They, were, they said, we, we're going to ignore him now. We're not going to answer his, um, uh, his questions. One of the emails discussing me was the subject line was, uh, watch out, watch out, there's a journal about. That's how they were talking about me. Oh. This is, and, 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 and again, that wasn't picked up in the media at all. We published a story about it. But these are, we're not powerful people. We're just alternative media journalists. And yet, when they come up against journalists, they're used to coming up against journalists that are pliant and do what they're told, or at least take the messaging that they that the the agencies want out to the population. When they come up against journalists who actually want to find out what the truth is, they don't know what to do, and their instant reaction is, "We won't engage, or we'll actually blacklist you and put you on a list." Um, and and this actually to to bring you up to the the last story I did was that the Foreign Office. I got more emails from the Foreign Office about me when I and and, it, and I, I discovered that after I'd put in Freedom of Information Act request, they had done they had personally profiled me and got links to my 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 pages on the Guardian and Open Democracy and, and whatnot, and they had set and then they'd rejected my request after that, which is unlawful. Um, or a lawyer told us it was unlawful. Again, there's no no reaction. Another request I made to the Cabinet Office, which supports Boris Johnson and has very uh, cross-government functions. They came back and to, I, there, there's this thing you can do here uh, called the subject access request, where you can request any data an agency has on you or, or an institution. They came back uh, late and to me when I made this request to the Cabinet Office and said, actually, we can't process your request because there's too you, we've got too much information on our on you in our within within our department that we it's too much to process. They said we referenced you 1,900 times in 18 months, which is four times a day. Uh, and I, I only wrote 31 articles in that period, so I don't know what that. And then I ref, tried to refine the search, and they haven't responded. So this is a government that just sees journalists as enemies, uh, and and actually it, it takes action against them. So, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a trend that you're seeing in the US as well. I mean, we live in an information age, right, where people, more independent minded people can get their message, message out. Documents can be released en masse in a much easier way. So narrative management is much more difficult for powerful states. So now they're going to clamp down on the ability of journalists to do their job because there's more, there's more ways we can get our work out. Um, we'll see how that ends. Again, just to finish, that also ties in with what I was mentioning earlier with that, about the reform of the Official Secrets Act and a general closing of the, uh, 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 of the ability to do national security reporting because they want to criminalise the, uh, the publication of um, uh, classified material that they deem is, um, damages national security. 
And actually, there's another proposal, which is even more scary, which is that they, they want to criminalize the handling of classified information. So even if you don't publish it, handle it, having it in your hand uh, could be criminal. That was another recommendation of a previous commission. So, yeah, you'll see, I mean, the UK state doesn't, as I mentioned, doesn't get uh, much, um, doesn't get many real journalists actually trying to find out what's going on. So, so they're probably a bit surprised by declassified, but long may it continue.